Vito here to remind you to go to lewdcomplex.com and use our promo code KOH Podcast. That's K O H P O D C A S T in all caps to save yourself some cash at checkout, man. Lewdcomplex.com. Don't forget it. Welcome to Knights of Hyperion. I'm Vito the Grey. I'm Lingling, Ling, and that's all I had to fucking do. I always try to put too much effort into these damn things. There's ah. the extra effort. Uh, it's tonight, uh, today, this afternoon, this Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. Hopefully we don't get a visit from the long guys that return to. Uh, we have a very special guest. He's been on the show before. Uh, but we just learned his actual name and what he, uh, his, uh, profession is, and he's actually a professor. Um, welcome to the show, Professor Possum. Thank you, Vito. Nice to be here. Ling Ling, thank you again. Uh, also, is he also, last time he was, ling. he's been on the show before, last time he went as, uh, La, I can't fucking The La Quache Senju. It, 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 it's a hybridization of, uh, Spanish and Japanese, uh, you know. It's a professor Possum. Yes. Uh, welcome back. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on on today's episode. Good to be here. Um, today we are packed with fun and exciting topics that I have no idea what they are. They're and a mystery fudge. to me. And what? We're also packed with fudge. I don't have any fudge. Freestyle oh, you, you, Friday you, you, fudge day. I already went to the restroom. Hmm. I don't have any fudge. Oh, it's, back. It's, it's in there. Don't worry. Well, <laughs> no, no you know what they say, milk, milk, lemonade. Around the corner, fudge is made. Uh, I don't want any milk. I've already had my, my share of vomiting this week. I don't want to vomit oh, again. How about that man milk? That has electrolytes. That's good for you. So does Brondo. What the fuck is Brondo? Fight it's what the plants crave. Brondo? It's what the plants so, crave. Oh... Idiocracy. Yeah, mm-hmm. Idiocracy. Brondo. It's got it's, electrolytes. Is that what the, the drink is called? Yeah. yeah. Brondo? Brondo. Brondo. Yeah, like, it's like, basically Gatorade. Yeah. It is Gatorade. Yeah. It's no, it's not it's Brondo. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Gatorade. They just changed the fucking name. It's Brondo. They yeah. probably found a Gatorade factory and uh, they uh, looted it and turned it into a little village like the people. Did in you say ex- looted it? Yeah, they looted the. Uh, not, not looted, looted. Loot. I heard the L E W D. You want loot. That's what you want. Why would I want looted mountain? Or not? I was about to do. Why would I looted Gatorade? Because you've got a complex about electrolytes. Do you remember the fucking (laughs) dojin of uh, of of the Fanta? No, uh, uh, Matsuri. There is a fucking dojin of uh, of of like uh, strawberry Fanta and orange Fanta, like fucking each other. And then there was one of like uh, Coke and Pepsi. I what do they, Coke and Pepsi what do they one. provide? What does it I reproduce? I don't know. I, I was just kind of like like skimming through it. Royal Crown, maybe. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Hope. yeah, because it is kind of like <laughs> Pepsi Coke and, and Pepsi. Coke. Coke. Yeah. yeah. Royal Coke, yeah. Yeah, yeah. RC, good old. RC yeah. Cola. Yeah. Holy shit, do they make that stuff? Yeah, I've yeah. seen it from here and there, yeah. It's still better. Yeah, it's, it's still great. always going to be still better. terrific. It's, but everybody wants to go with Pepsi or Coke. No, it's because... You got a Pepsi product? RC's hard to get to, you know. It's kind of a treasure out there. It really is like a Royal Cola. It's kind of like a squirt, too. Mm. Squirt or... Uh, mellow Yellow. Mellow yeah. Yellow. That's I like, still I like the there. Squirt. I think I preferred it, too, in the Mellow Yellow, but I like the Mellow okay, Yellow. Okay, is Squirt grapefruit or lemon i think it's like fresca i think it's a hybridization like a grapefruit peach pear combo or some crazy see shit. i thought it was grapefruit. fresca was good though no. i was talking to cat about that i think fresca last night we were trying to we we're having a discussion of whether what was squirt if it was like a lemon lime drink or if it was a grapefruit drink she's it's probably a grapefruit lemon lime combo right she's convinced it's like lemon lime weird drink. i guess it would be grapefruit though i'd say grapefruit but it didn't have the grapefruit mm-hmm. color though doesn't need it. Hmm. Squirt's uh, like a... It's like an opaque. Yeah. like Kind of like that cloudy. white Gatorade. I, was, I thought it was like a, ye- like a murky yellow. Yeah, well, yeah. murky yellow, yeah. It's cloudy. Yeah, it's cloudy. Because, I mean, Sprite's clear, but it's yeah. lemon limey, so... Well, wasn't that like borderline energy drink, though? 
That was Surge. Yeah. Oh, that's, something yeah. Surge. You can, you can actually buy that online. Yeah. I've seen yeah. that. You can buy fucking Yeah, you buy 12 packs for like 20 they bucks. They still sell it in the Walmart in my hometown. No shit. Yes, they do. I went back and I was like, dude, that Surge. And, uh, Jolt Cola. Yeah, Jolt Cola. I don't remember that shit. one. Yeah, in the they days to, before you had wings, you know. Yeah, they used to sell them at the food store in front of my neighborhood on my way to school. We'd pick them up and they'd be in those big ass cans, like the uh, kind of like the monster, not the BFC monsters, but <laughs> right. the other ones. Like Tall boys with the twist on top. Oh yeah, those. Yeah, they, they came in those cans first. Like those are the ones like that Arizona came in. tea. Yeah, yeah, with like, the twist top. Yeah. Those Jolt Cola. They had like cherry, Whoa. classic cola, and like some other one. The but four locos of childhood. That Jolt Cola was the shit, man. And then they stopped selling them in stores. Isn't four loco still part of your childhood though? No, I never drank four loco. I think that's part of my early adolescence. I never drank four loco. Yeah, I got I got real nice and homeless beard out for you know a nice while in austin yeah it was like right when they came out sparks and all that it was still they hadn't quite illegalized alcohol and energy drinks together in stores yet so they still fucking sell it well yeah but there was panther juice and sparks and oh yeah there was a bunch of different choices until they just narrowed it down but yeah four locos is a is a is a bad time a lost tooth and a trip to county jail usually and it fucks you up well that's what it's made for no kidding (laughs) <laughs> Four locos, not even spelled correctly. <laughs> like, <laughs> throw away the Freedom Thirty Five, boys. Here's a Four Loco. Well, if it's you, like if you drink enough, you don't care so how it's, it's spelled. The way it's spelled is like the number four O U R and then L O K O, right? Larco. I thought it was like, is that how it's spelled? I thought it was just four and then L O K O S. No, it's maybe a, I might just be have drink it and I look at it. Say and be dyslexic. I F, think I'm. F, F, it's hard four. to read when it's upside down when you're drinking it. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. <laughs> you get it gets all blurry, and the OU from four drifts into loco, and you're like, "Fuck out!" Fuck yeah! Yeah, no, I never, never, never uh, got into the whole four locos. Never wanted yeah. to drink them. With the idea of alcohol and energy just sounded retarded. To me. You know, you know, but see, you know, I, I just happened to just turn like. 2019 so yeah they were they were on the bill of sale mm. in the early days but yeah once i got to the age of reason 35 or so i kicked them to the curb <sighs> but i mean you can do red bull vodka that's no, like yeah. energy vodka. alcohol yeah it dehydrates it, the fuck out of you it damn sure does i don't not touch vodka and just drink a red bull by itself that's just me though Fair enough. They mix really well, and you know, I don't doubt it. South by Southwest is real fun with a vodka Red Bull like keeps you going, combo. man. Yeah. I, I'm not big keeps on clear. Yeah, yeah, you got a lot of shows to get to. Yeah. The problem is clear doesn't stay down. Clear comes up for me. For real, I'm yeah. the opposite. I'm I'm directly inversed. I can handle all clears. My darks it's, stay down, though. It's the darks that stay. Really, though, my whiskeys stay down. The only thing that really likes to resurge is that agave base, whether it's clear or dark. It, boy, howdy. That tequila fucks me up. Uh, I went to uh, this one bar one night a long time ago called Agave. Oh, the one down the street? Yeah, the one over at uh, Six and Clay. I, I think I've been there once before it got flooded out. I got... Fucking trash. Don't remember how I got home. Don't didn't realize that I took fucking Patrick home too. Oh, we went out, met up with the buddy, and he kept get buying buckets of beer. And then his friend came over and bought buckets of beer, and we were just fucking pounding all night. And I just, I think we were there until fucking the bar closed until they turned on the lights. Yeah, and you're like, oh fuck, you're ugly, and then walked out. And everybody was scattering like fucking cockroaches. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, fuck, I still have beer. <sighs> Ten more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one yelled, no. <laughs> I just fucking just downed it. And I don't even remember how I got home that night. All I remember is just, like, Patrick texting me the next day. He's like, dude, like, the only thing I remember last night is my mom walking downstairs and me with a slice of cold pizza in my hand and my pants around my ankles at the kitchen counter. Oh, and that's she, right? Yeah, and she just, like, she asked me, like, what the hell's going on? Are you drunk? And all apparently all I said was just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just casual. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Was there a piss puddle, though? I don't know. I don't know about that. If not, he hasn't admitted it to this day. Man, right. I've had some, yeah, I got some pretty, pretty interesting getting drunk and pissing in, in strange places stories. Like, 
I don't know. One time, we have a friend decided to tackle a handle of Jim Beam and a 24 pack of Lone Star. Oof. Uh, yeah. The uh, nice big old bottle for 20 bucks. Oh, yeah. Well, it was the bigger one, yeah. Dude, Jim Beam's a hell of a deal, but. It's like 35. We got the $35 one, I think. It was the bigger than the fist, right? It had yeah. the extra handle on it. <laughs> the jug. <laughs> the jug of Jimmy. Which I prefer to Jackie over, you know, the six to one, you know. I mean, the whole story, Jackie stole the recipe from his cousin Jim and threw it across the state lines to Tennessee from Kentucky, and that's how he got And then he changed it seven times to where he could actually get a new patent, and that's where old number seven comes from. But anyhow, long story, I didn't know hyper that. short. I didn't know that. I pass out in, in the living room of this shack out in the middle of the country, I wake up and had pissed in my friend's shoes, and uh, they were a brand new pair of Jordan 11s. Oh God! Yeah, the gray ones. And uh, luckily, we were we had some pretty good rapport because he's like fat kid. And that's what they called me in the high school. It was like uh, if it would have been anybody else, uh, I definitely would have had to have uh, taken that out of your ass. You probably would have lost a tooth or two, but. Uh, I know you didn't do it on purpose, and you just piss when you get drunk. I'm like, that I do. <laughs> and they just shrug a little bit. I mean, like that. <laughs> I mean, I'd already been caught six times, like in the kitchen, on separate events, like separate weekends, pissing in the trash can. And this time, I just got so floored that I couldn't even make it to the yeah. trash can in the kitchen. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talk sleepwalk combined with p- fucking liquor pissing. Man, oh, what a nasty combo. So. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've been shit house, pissing in the trash can drunk, but boy, you know, those were the days, I guess. I don't remember the, the time I got that drunk. I was it my birthday? Or oh. I texted you for help? <laughs> <laughs> Freaking, he scared the shit out of me because he walks outside because I'm still awake and I just see, oh, I finally see help. I walk outside, he's over here just like, you just threw up on the concrete. I'm like, God, like, you scared the shit out of me. I thought you fell. Yeah, it's like I'm sitting there holding up to like oh, the gates like half open and like I'm holding myself up and I'm just like just fucking hurling just uh, all liquid noodles in it. Ooh. The only reason I texted help because I was too lazy to be like, hey, can you bring me the paper towels? The only thing I could think of was help. Uh, <laughs> I come out, I was like, going, you okay? Like, he's like, oh, fine, just, just give me the paper towels. I just need paper towels. <laughs> What's the grossest puke y'all puked? And you remember thinking about the meal you had had, and it makes you throw up more when you see it, like, come back up. The okay. grossest one I've ever had was my friend and I were slamming back some uh, Jaeger and Red Bull. Oh, no, sorry, not even Red Bull. You ever heard of Spike? Oh. Spike Energy? Like, yeah. for the TV? No, I'm talking about, like, energy drinks called Spike. Uh-huh. It was about 300 or so milligrams of caffeine in a can. They used to sell them at a vitamin shop So when Chaz used to work there. So we're slamming them back. We had a cup that was equivalent to about three of them at a time. We're slamming them back. We took about four of those in about 30 minutes. Oh, my God. So oh. the equivalent of about 12 of them. This is why I can't touch Jaeger anymore. God, oh, Jesus. And uh, I felt good for about an hour. And then I felt very, very bad. <laughs> it, it, it plummeted real quick. Uh, I end up, like, puking gray to this day. I'm like, I can't. I look at Jaeger and I just, I just go, Gray? Ugh. It was gray. Ugh. Like, I don't know where the color came from. <laughs> Jaeger's, like, b- like greenish color. Ugh. Unless it's just a mix. But it's yeah. straight black, isn't it? It's like licorice, yeah, what, isn't it? Yeah. They might have mixed gray with the so Red Bull. It like it. Or it looks like, like licorice. licorice and the it spike. Like it. Yeah, and the energy drink. <laughs> like, to this day, like, if I ever see it, you'll see me go... <laughs> like, you'll see me, like, shiver. Like, I don't want to touch it ever. <laughs> so it looked like gray raw syringe. I don't know, like, what... The grossest thing was I've thrown up so much. Like I must, I have such a sensitive stomach that if anything uh, that it doesn't agree with it, it'll come right back up. Oh, I mean, so I've thrown up like all sorts of things. Either that, so, or, that or my birthday weekend when I was here, like the one of the few times I stayed at your house. Oh, where you threw up bread and you thought you were throwing up blood? Like I was, <laughs> I was drinking and uh, they got me a birthday cake with red icing and I got uh, sick that night. <laughs> so I threw up and it came out red. I'm like, oh crap, I'm dying. And I'm like, wait, this uh, isn't blood. This is uh, red icing. That would be a trip, you know. You'd have to give it the old taste test, but you don't want to do it because it's liquor and bile. You know, you get a <laughs> Ooh, like, I, 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 Those are like the only two stories I have that are pretty much like not just me just literally losing my guts. 
Oh, me and my friend pre-gamed before going out to a high school party, and he fried up some bacon and made some bacon sandwiches. And we were already, like, pre-game drunk on beer. And then we went out and got way, 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 way too shit house on Jose Cuervo and keg standing. I ended up, I had a trucker hat that I ended up face down and puking into. Just puking like, the sides. Holding, it was holding my puke, but it was a trucker hat, so it was <laughs> leaking out. And I was just using it as a vessel to hold my puke. <laughs> I didn't know what else to puke in and I was like in somebody's house but way too drunk to make my way out of it <laughs> and felt terrible about puking in their floor so I thought I'd just put my hat in between the floor and my puke you know maybe well if I have to take a loss maybe you won't be so upset about this fucked up bacon greasy bacon sandwich stain on us uh, yeah <laughs> I would have that was probably really bad yeah oh, I'm not, I'd never partied at that fella's house again I just I was like nah the... man the worst thing you can possibly fucking throw up is rice like rice because when especially if it's like if you eat a meal with like a big old fucking plate of rice it comes up dry Ooh. chunky and painful and sharp oh, yeah. yeah okay I can it, see that one uh, I wow. feel every time any any time that I've ever thrown up rice, it felt like I was choking on it and I was gonna die. Like it reloses its water inside of you and comes back up. Yeah, like it, I, I thought you were like eating that yeah. seasoned or like hot sauce or anything. Nah, like dude, it comes that up. Like, it oh. comes up all chewed up, like as if you were to mash it up and make it into like a rice cake or right. or like um uh like um fucking like yogurt. The rice yogurt yeah. and arroz con leche and shit. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what it looks like, but all mushed up together, um, oh. and uh, it just—it's painful as fuck, dude. But it's hard though, like that though. It's like pasty, but it's, it's pasty, like, but gritty. It's, like it feels grits. gritty. It feels feels gritty coming up. It feels oh. like it's scratching your throat and scratching your chest because you're coughing it up and it comes up in Good Murphy. like chunks, like nasty fucking whole chunks. Of, all at once and then you're sitting there gasping for air then you gag again and then more comes out yeah I can see that Good. Ugh. terrible yeah, see I don't have a very easy stomach to spurl but the one thing that does is puke like it's a trigger it's like if I see somebody go I'm going <laughs> <laughs> you're next in line then everyone's yeah. going to do <laughs> chain it's, reaction yes, man. It it's usually how it works it's a fucking chain yeah. reaction if one person's going to go the next person's going to go uh-huh. then that other person's could probably be even more sensitive to that because it's multiple yeah. smells all at once and it's just and then it's just a lot of times not even the smell it's just the sound that, and the and dude see seeing like all right, like the time that that uh, that Patrick threw up in my in my bedroom at my parents' house. Where, that was like a borderline freaking exorcism. It, the way you describe it every time to this day, it <laughs> is. It is. That's how it fucking uh, launched out, dude. That's uh-huh. like, that's fucking. How does that? How does the human body do that to just shoot it out? Just like projectile. A fucking body? Yeah. Because it was kind of like that for me the other night, uh, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday early Tuesday morning, like at one in the morning, whenever I woke up from and just like felt the fucking shit coming up, Ugh. like as I fucking kneel down towards the toilet, it just <sighs> like whoa, what the fuck? How does how does that? I don't I don't get it. I guess whole stomach goes and just pushes it out, like just contracts all yeah. together to its ultimate. I don't know. I've I got I was in Fort Worth getting sh- shitty drunk with some of my friends, and uh, we they had pictures of PBR for like six bucks. So and we're all three big dudes. So we each try to get a picture, and they totally won't let us. Like they're like, no, you can't have your own picture. You got to share it because y'all are just gonna down that six dollar picture and come right back. And we did manage to all get a picture by going to different bartenders, which was what probably. Was Against the best bets, right? Th- the best choices. Sorry, it makes me think of a fucking ding whenever you walk into a convenience store. Ding. Yeah, like, it's, it's very similar. So just and uh, made me think of. Sorry. So no, you're fine. We, my ding interrupted it all anyway. So we were uh, we got kicked out of the bar because the bartender says, "I told y'all y'all can't each have a pitcher. We're trying to have a good calm night tonight, and you look like some rowdy old boys." And you know we were. I was the least rowdy of them. But anyway, so we're all walking out in the parking lot, and then I had never done it before. I'd only heard about it, you know, the projectile vomit, but it's just liquid. And yeah. It comes from just downing a lot of beer really fast, you know, and 
because we got to get our six dollars worth. We're gonna kill the pitchers before we leave if we get kicked out. Fuck the bullshit. And it was hard because we had only been there like fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so I'm right out to the truck and I'm about to get in, and all of a sudden, like an eight foot just kamehameha of PBR puke just flies <laughs> across this. Gun. It and it was just once. It was just a <laughs> and then. I was good. I got in the truck. And they're like, are you all right? That was fucking gnarly. I was like, just, I just, too much liquid, you know, it filled it all the way up. Yeah. It's it's crazy that, that how it just forces it out of you. Like, yeah. I was going to mess with you. And you're like, I don't know what happens. I'm like, we're not that far in sales at work yet. <laughs> are, we're not at all. Um we learned about sneezing, how they fire rockets into the top of the nose. Uh, there's this anime where it's like an osmosis anime where it's just, it, it just shows you how the human body works. Right. And uh, the way they do sneezing is that every time they got, the person needs to sneeze, they go through a rocket launch process. And then they just launch a rocket out of the nose and it's a sneeze. And every time they do it, it's like a successful launch. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Yeah, well, it's, really, it's, really, it's really good. It's called Cells at Work. Cells at work. Mm-hmm. I'll, I, I've always liked the Osmosis Jones, like, uh, inner space concept. Even, you know, the, what do they call it? What, what, is, what does the old, the old man do with the old dirty Santa Claus, you know, in that one show? Where, you know, they're, they're awfully popular. You know, the Back to the Future ripoff with the old dirty homeless Santa Claus. Dirty that, homeless Santa Claus. That they make a, a fucking uh, theme park inside of. Is it a new show? Yeah, you know the show. Rick and Morty? Yeah. Oh. Is it that one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't remember that episode. Sounds like Bad Santa, Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah, like, I was trying. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> remember the old fucking, you know, the dude, they built the theme park inside of this old homeless guy who's a fucking Santa Claus and it's Christmas time and they launch him into fucking space to get old Morty out one of the fucking pores. Because uh, shit's going ape shit inside of there. One of my favorite ones is uh, from Futurama, mm-hmm. where Fry eats the bad egg salad from the truck stop. Oh, then the the worm colony is on the side of them. Mm-hmm. That's probably like one of my favorite ones. Hell yeah! But the way uh, like in cells at work, they have like the white blood cells, and the way they come in and kill them is so fucking badass. Hell dude. Yeah. It's brutal as shit. There's no mercy. Just fucking slash and gut and kill. Our, our, like, viruses and bacteria, like, fucking invaders and badass Yeah, monsters looking and fucking shit. monsters, like, Hell alien-looking yeah. creatures. And, the, yeah. and then the platelets come up, and you're like, oh. Yeah, the platelets are these tiny little fucking like little children. kids. Uh-huh. And they're adorable as shit. They all work together, have whistles, and before they start, like, uh, closing up wounds, they all go through a training thing. They're like, okay, everybody, whenever you're going down, hold hands, da 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 It's fucking adorable as shit. Nice. Probably one of the best things of the show. What was that other with that chick with the fucking chef like that? Oh, butcher's can, knife. It's another one of the white blood cells. I forgot the but name, it, but it's like one of the stronger ones. That's like, um, I forgot what 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 she what, what she T four or T two. But she comes in with this big ass fucking blade, like this butcher's blade that like probably like sand. Like the blade sits about this high, the handle's probably about like this high, and she's just like wearing this like old timey maid outfit is really like pretty lady and, and she just was like that was easy a bacteria phage and it was fucking she's yeah. brutal she's blood all over her and she's just like well another day at work <laughs> and, then, and then the flu episode they introduced the guy who spawns the antibodies and then like at the end they're like shooting the type b and they're like no crap the type a he goes up here back he tries like run off i think i've seen that one this is where it's like where where the the entire body gets uh, uh, like oh it's like the first episode isn't it no it's like the third or f- I think they just did the fifth so it's like the third one oh fuck how behind am I the fourth one was a parasite I think the parasite was pretty cool too so it just goes like different far. infections and then how the body responds yeah freaking the that's cool the parasite's like a giant like sea monster looking thing it looks yeah. like a giant <laughs> eel yeah well I mean you know size comparison wise it would be you know. One of those was a tapeworm or a hookworm to a, a leukocyte. Uh, dude. That's, that's a really good show. That sounds cool. Like a, I didn't even know that was like even being released for a summer, for the summer lineup. I knew it was. I just didn't think it would be that good. And I watched the first episode after like one of the people actually do watch on YouTube was like, this is going to be the number one show of the season. I'm like, why is it? And I'm like, oh, okay, I see why now. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's awesome. 
Man, um, so earlier, how I you know how I mentioned the uh, who was it? We were talking about that loot at the store. Another conversation we were having earlier. Uh, um, so in Exodus. Oh, okay. Uh, my, my adventures over the weekend on Exodus. And I told you some of it this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were coming up from uh, after we had, like, uh, searched the Buckies and had a fight behind the Buckies. The Buckies, that's actually by your house. I was going to say, isn't that, like, all taking place over by my house? Yeah, all of that was happening, actually, like, down the road from your house. Uh, post-apocalyptic time, 300 years into the future after the bombs are dropped. Whoa. Um, we uh, had a fight with some people, looted the uh, look for shit at the Bucky's, made our way towards uh, NASA, the Space Center. That's like and not nearby, but... No, we, after that. After okay. Because we, we had taken two weeks off. I wasn't going to be there for uh, the, the 22nd, which was the ninth anniversary, our ninth anniversary, and then nobody ended up showing up, so that game was canceled. And then... Uh, the week after that, he ended up canceling. He wasn't able to do it. And then we're last weekend, last Sunday. Oh, okay. So we are done with that. And we are on our way to the Space Center to, they were calling it NASA and, uh, and the Johnson Space Center. NASA headquarters where everything is or whatever. Trying to see if there's any lab, any equipment left that we can build armor out of. So, so did y'all like skip that entire process or like, did y'all like talk about the travel between or... Yeah, well, what the heck happened to Buckies? Because between, between here, it, because between my house and the Space Center, it's like a good hour of... Yeah, d- yeah. So that's well, in the no traffic. So, Green's so the point, way, you got to go through your home. Okay, so the way our... Plus, he's on the freeway, and like, you'll all just stared at the land, and someone contemplated life, and it's like, okay, we're here. It's like, oh, I'm still thinking about life. 300 years, you couldn't travel those freeways. They'd be out of there. That would have collapsed by then. So the way the Vault Master... He wants to be called the Vault Master, by the way. The way the Vault Master once ran it was that we traveled out, like, towards that general direction. And on the way, we made some stops around to find items. So basically, like, a little minor detail, kind of skimmable. Yeah, and, you know, we skipped ahead... Oh, that sounded painful, by the way. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> Did you take a silk strider? Or? I don't know. I just, my fucking shoulder just popped. Um, and then we ended up on, like, going towards, like, the exit to start going down the road towards it. And at the exit, there's the down ramp. And on the down ramp, there's a village. And then the exit to go straight or whatever is the way to the space center, to NASA. And, uh, and I made the decision to be like, hey, let's go check out what this village has. Maybe they can trade for some shit and they'd want to, like, you know, trade. Maybe they have goods. Who knows what these people are? Or you can be that one person goes rape and pillage. No, I've thought about that. But no. I'm glad someone thought about it, though. <laughs> uh, Everyone's like, let's be good Christians. I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one that thought about it. Uh, so I ended up taking that. So I have five pounds of weed on me. My character had five, had, uh, five pounds of weed. And uh, I took a pound with me to go to take with me to go trade with the people. They were friendly at first, you know, asking us if we had any other friends or anybody that was like, any anybody else that was in our party. Till so you, the they people, realized you sold them oregano, huh? I was going to say, you got that uh, pure grade oregano. Huh? <laughs> let, me, let me finish, let me finish. Uh, so, you got that good deception roll. Uh-huh. No, no, man, my... my <laughs> Near, near stuff is pure grade shit, man. He learned from his older brother, Beer. Nice. And it's some pretty good shit. And then their disowned brother, Queer? They're, they wouldn't disown him. It's not that kind of family fucker. Well, I didn't know. Well, of course. Or maybe in the apocalypse, but you can't be a fucking... Everybody's welcome. Nobody's, nobody has anybody. Well, the grandkids of the Grand Vizier, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Um, so... They were up for the trade. They're like, yeah, yeah, we'll trade you. Uh, we trade you some of these meats that we have that we uh, we dried ourselves from the animals around in the area. And so they go and um, look for the for the meat. While I was having the conversation of showing them the uh, the weed that I had, let them hit the pipe, then let them have little samples of everything, and they got really excited over it because it, it tasted really good mm-hmm. and they're really happy and they were interested into the trade. Our friend of the party, we don't know his name, his name is Stranger. We call him the Stranger. He decides to climb, to sneak into one of the huts. Is he like the friendly Stranger? He's a vegetarian cannibal. Mm. Uh, He doesn't like super mutants. Mm. He's very, like, uh, has a lot of 
explosive knowledge and survival knowledge. He built this character very well. Um, but anyways, he snuck into the hut to fucking steal the, the, the dried meat and looted everything else and made noise going in and out of the hut. And the guard kind of just like took notice, but they didn't really like uh, think of to go inside. It just maybe just something fucking fell over. Who knows? Um, makes it out of the hut just fine. And then they go in to find the meat. And meat's gone. They're like, oh, sir, there's no dried meat. There's no dried meat. Was, I bet it was your, it was uh, that, that boy again, um, uh, Dunbei, Dunbei. He's that little fat boy. He's always eating everything. He's always fucking taking everything and never oh, doing like anything. I like dried meats. <clears throat> and uh, so um, they were like, who else, is in that, who else is in your party? Like, who do you have other people? Are there anybody in the surrounding areas? I was like, nothing to my knowledge. And all I know is our, our people over back at the fire truck over up on the hill, minding their own business. Oh, the people that were with me were Cho Man Joe. Uh, bison herder, the two super mutants, oh. um, and uh, the ghoul, uh, Deadward. He was with me. Dead he Lord. wanted to see if they had any electronics. Um, <laughs> we find out that this village is actually known as Costco. What? I was like, all he wanted was electronics. I'm like, what if all he wanted was an iPod? <laughs> the village of no. New Costco. He no. wanted a shuffle, not even like a touch <laughs> so or the anything. Village, the village is known as Costco. <laughs> Hell yeah. um, so what this village did is they found a Costco early along in the, uh, in the apocalypse, looted the entire fucking thing, took everything, moved it out of the Costco. Instead of staying in the Costco, they moved everything out of the Costco and built a village out by the space center in the woods out of huts and like these little like mud huts that they built and. Um, it's actually really big from the entrance. You can only see about like 10 to 12 huts mm-hmm. and it's just little, little tiny huts. But after the woods, it gets fucking huge. They have a fucking men's department, shoes, electronics, nice. groceries. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome and, to your post-apocalyptic marketplace. And feminine products. They, they, they had Costco. everything. They had everything. They had everything. Same so, great taste. So the guy that's in the electronics department comes out. He's yelling, Doonbay, Doonbay, where's my boy Doonbay? Little did, did the villagers know that the villagers of Costco, little did they know our stranger lured one of the children out that were playing out by the outskirts that he, where he was hiding. That's where he's been hiding the entire time is out in the outskirts. And there's three kids that was running by. And they ran by and they ran off. And he was able to uh, get one of them's attention and brought them over. He took them a little ways away and murdered him, ate the little boy, and threw his carcass some, like, further, like, he said, like, 300 yards or something away from the village or some shit. Just, like, lobbed it. Just, yeah, just fucking chunked it. <laughs> Squish. And, uh, and just left it. So that boy was actually Dunbei. Hmm. And uh, the dad with the electronics department uh, was looking for him. It's his dad that worked there and uh, blamed us. And then the things got a little kind of, like, heated from there because they lost the trust that they kind of had built for us because they thought that we stole the meat and the kidnapped that guy's son and the guy was just losing his shit so they sent out trackers they sent out three trackers two out of the three trackers find stranger Whoa. um they both wound him the second one wound him really really bad and uh, and he was basically just bleeding out and he wouldn't his words, he's like, I'm not going to be killed by some fucking villager. Yeah. Self-destructs. He's wearing a suicide vest. Um, when we left the co- uh, the Bucky's, um, Joe Man Joe found some armor that he wanted to build and asked Stranger to build it for him. Stranger doesn't like super mutants, as like I said earlier. Mm-hmm. He uh, put a bomb inside, like implanted a bomb into the Cho Man Joe's new armor. And uh, didn't tell him about it, and Cho Man Joe just wore it. And he had that bomb synced to his suicide vest, and at, oh. linked to the same detonator. Yeah. So whenever he killed himself, or if he if he died at all, uh, his vest would have gone off. Even if the suicide vest didn't go off, he was like he had it linked to his like heartbeat or some shit. I don't remember that and the trigger. And uh, so he killed himself, and the suicide vest fucking blew up. And uh, and and Cho Man Joe's armor process, blew up. Really. So, I'm a five foot one human yeah. that Strand. hangs out with a fifteen foot tall super mutant. Yeah. And I ride his shoulders. We fucking sh- master blast this shit. Stranded little 
And uh, I'm sitting here on his shoulder. And we also had dead word on, on our shoulder because they they rushed us out of the fucking village. So we were just making our way. And then we hear the gunshots and we're like, oh, fuck, we know who that is. And then we start making run for it. Um, and uh, and then, boom, detonator. I die instantly. Joe Man Joe's down to two health. Dead word's down to one health. Bison Herd is down to, to like one health. One or two health, and I'm the only one that doesn't make it out of there. Me and Stranger don't make it out, and um, I die. I'm not even fucking like three games in, and I fucking I get killed out of nowhere. Just fucking just came out of nowhere. Like hmm. like Vaultmaster was not expecting us. He didn't want us to go to the village to begin with. He was like, "Fuck!" Like, all right, fine, we're fine. Y'all can go to the village. Didn't want us to go at all. He wanted us to go straight to the fucking space center, and. Uh, <laughs> We lost two characters that day. I actually almost fucking, uh, fucking almost uh, killed the entire party in one fucking go. But if it wasn't for the fucking ghoul and the super mutant having really good health or some shit, they fucking survived. That's all about stats. And they fucking survived and I died. Yeah, but I mean, if you think <clears> about it, so y'all would have survived. Y'all conceivably would have had a whole bunch of beef jerky. The stranger is, what you say, a vegan cannibal. Right, so he definitely would have had to dry some of that fat boy's meat to continue the journey as well. And who knows if y'all's beef jerky would have gotten mixed up with his fat kid jerky, then that would have been a fun time. He he eats it raw. He doesn't prep his human meat. He eats it off the bone, straight off the bone. Is he part plant? Is he just really eats? That's the only kind. That's the only kind of meat he eats. The only kind of meat he eats. It was the only kind he did eat was uh, Human. human meat. Everything else was vegetables. Right. I don't, know, I don't know, man. That was his character. That was just really fucking weird. He just shrugged like, I'll allow it. He was just like, okay, fuck For it. the power of plants, I eat humans, you know. Yeah, I mean, he needed his some real, other... His real... He needed, I guess he could say he needed a real source of protein. You can't really get anything well, else. I mean, so, you know, I guess there's lots of humans. It's post-apocalyptic. It's 300 years. Yeah. yeah. Numbers game, you know. Yeah. yeah. Like, fuck it. Humans. But to have that, that vegan turn, I don't eat meat, but when I do... I prefer humans. I eat humans. Yeah. <laughs> and then I hunt it like I'm a lion, right? No, I'm just on all fours right. fucking chasing I after. pick off the slowest, smallest I can find. Or depends quick. on his just... character design. It could be all six. If he had six. If he had four arms. Um, he might be resurrected. So it turns out that Stranger has a twin brother named Danger. <laughs> <laughs> Is that... <laughs> Are y'all doing the whole freaking uh, beer fest way? It's like, oh yeah, that's just my cousin. It's the exact same person. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, exactly. Exactly. Very That's good. exactly what happened. Uh, his name is Danger. Uh, <laughs> and Nier's older brother, Beer, gets introduced into the story. And they meet Beer at the Space Center after uh, Tex, our vault master, mourns the death of Nier and buries Nier. And he was really, really sad because apparently that was like that was the nicest person that he's met in the wasteland. After all the years that he's been out in the wasteland. So his character was really sad <laughs> that I died. And uh, he didn't give a fuck about Stranger, I guess. He's kind of just like, fuck that asshole. <laughs> yeah, well, he didn't like super mutants, you know. Yeah, Bulls uh, kind of like him. Huh? So does that mean you guys sit down and make another character or one? So, yeah, his, yeah now I have to... Um, well, for the for the remainder of the game, I just use near stats. And uh, Trauma did the same thing with Danger. He just used his stats. But things got heated with, with his character and... Uh, dead word they got things got really fucking heated and they got into it and they got into a fight and his second character danger is dead (laughs) (laughs) he self-destructed again (laughs) like i fucked his shit and just killed himself i don't know why it's just like i don't even remember what happened it all escalated so fucking quickly was like like, i rolled an 18 i want to use my fucking 18 i want to fucking kill you is that in fiction or is that like an actual like argument between the two in game in oh, game it was just like uh, like and he, Aaron didn't know what to do he's like oh, oh shit fuck he has to allow it all right fuck it yeah if he rolled he, he rolled, rolled he rolled it an eighteen and plus his you know his plus adjustments his explosive. it was just like he started attacking him and they started fighting and then he wanted to fight like the super mutants or whatever because he was shooting at us on our way to the fucking to the actual labs and uh, what was that. I heard a weird like ding. So danger's dead and stranger's dead. Yeah, but the the what about ranger? That that's their father. <laughs> dead serious. That's that's their dad. So 
<laughs> the conflict that that started everything between Danger getting in a fight. He started shooting at us as we Let's rode the train. Hopefully, Ranger could get along with Super Mutants long uh, enough to pull off. A- yeah, because they met, they met Beer. They meet Beer at the Johnson Space Center. Beer has been living there for a few years now. Um, he decided to stay there and station himself a little grow op in this Johnson Space Center. Now, Beer taught everything. To Nier. Nier learned everything from his brother, from his oh. methods of growing to the strains to, you know, just everything. Crossbreeding, you name it. Right. But, and we were treating Beer as the Walter White of of, X, of our uh, apocalypse. It's like, nice. I, uh, I'm the only one that can knows how to grow the weed, knows what I'm doing, and grows like the best of the best that's out in the apocalypse. And, uh... Some so, mushrooms and LSD while I'm at it. Why not? Huh? No, actually, I'm gonna see if I can uh, introduce that. I'll talk to, I'll talk to to Aaron about that, and then see if he'll let us. If he'll let me, It'll be a psychotropic rogue. Yeah, and a, just a hallucinogenic grow, grow drug. You can and just I like can, spray in somebody's that's how face I make my and money. miss. That's how I make my money. Is I sell the herbs. Yeah. And, like, that's what I did living in, at the Johnson Space Center is I sold my herbs to the locals and made my living doing that. And I grew my shit in the cafeteria where there's a fucking sunroof in the cafeteria. All of that is a fucking greenhouse. What's house. Molly Base Charisma Spray? It's like, I'm going to say Phil let me do that. That's a really good idea. Just start growing mushrooms Slight and vapor of, You know, air eyes, Molly goes into the, the seller's nose and his disposition instantly changes. Has a lot better price for you. Either that or you can take whoever has the best reception and make them a spotter. And that way, if you can also put the whole fact that your girl's low and be like, oh, it's a death cap. Uh, yeah. That'd be an interesting twist. It's yeah. like, oh, yeah, you roll one. You're like, oh, yeah, it's, it's good shit. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying. Then someone dies. Yeah, so, so well, danger. I mean, so the purple me, stem is the key. Yeah. You know. For what? Well, if you roll a one, you don't see any of that. Well, true. <laughs> All right, so let me finish the, uh, the, the whole conflict between danger and why he died. Um, he started shooting at us from a fucking warehouse building from a little ways away uh, next to the labs because we uh, beer fixed a train that takes them to from the Johnson Space Center to the actual like to like the to the actual labs every whatever it's called NASOM or whatever they call it yeah, I forgot time. NASON I think that's what they're calling it um, and uh, he was shooting at us from a warehouse that was from the other way so that that building has been locked nobody's ever been in there I have the key. But uh, since I lived, uh, since I lived there, I saw I found the key and I have it in there. But they decided after the whole conflict with uh, Danger and him shooting at us, trying to see who the fuck we are because we were trespassing because he was trying to claim the area. Uh, same conflict as how Stranger was introduced, actually. But uh, yeah, that that whole thing ended up going to where he self destructed and killed himself. But. They didn't ask if I had the key to get into the nest something. So Super Mutant Joe Man Joe decides to just fucking shoulder his way through the fucking wall and destroy his fucking, like, a big old chunk of the wall to what get in. What if the door's, like, right here and he just shoulders right here next to it? And basically what he did. But Joe Man and, Joe's vest blew up, too, didn't it? His mm-hmm. armor piece. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have it anymore. He's uh, uh, he's gonna he's got to make some new one now, and he's going to get Deadward to make it, because Deadward can oh, craft. Oh, he just bodied the explosion, like, yeah. at least... Yeah, he was like missing a huge chunk of his body, <laughs> and after a couple of stim packs, it started growing out. Like nice. it started growing back. But uh, dude, that Sunday was one Cracker. hell of a fucking game. Hell yeah! Holy shit, dude! It was just unexpected turns after the next, dude. I it was not like, I wasn't expecting to fucking die. I was not expecting to die. That was just. Fuck, I gotta make a new character. It I gotta make of, it before Sunday. It I gotta make beer. sounds like old, old, uh, the stranger danger combo is like chaotic neutral. Huh? Yeah. So we'll see what he I'm comes up with. Continue. We'll see what he comes up with on his character. But I'm gonna make my character different this time and I wanna make him a little more. At least now he knows what to do and you can make it around where you wanna go with it now. Yeah. But right, you, but that's you, true. you probably gotta talk with Aaron to build into the story. I'll uh, we'll see be. if I can get over there sometime. This week before Sunday, and uh, see what I can do. I gotta go pee. I'm gonna step out. Anybody want anything to drink while I'm out? I'm good. Thank you. Fine. All right, I'll be right back. No, stranger danger. I'm the third brother, Mike. When you come back, tell us about Ranger. But yeah, whenever he was, he was talking about the fact that he's like, I wonder if we're gonna die or not. 
we were trying to play D and D for a bit. Did he ever talk about those stories or no? Yeah, I mean, we've talked. He talked about Exodus, which I've never personally played yet, but I'm familiar with D and D. I played a lot of three point five, so. Well, we were trying to get into. I've heard of it, you know, like is it, stories of. But. Is it five point five or is it five? No, it's five. Five point oh. Five yeah, five point oh. We were trying to play it a little bit. I, I chose to be Claire because I like playing the healer characters. How, how does that work? How do how do the functions work in that? I'm not familiar with it. How is it different than three point five a lot or? I'm not sure. I've How does the feat system work and the initiative and all that? Uh, the feats, I think, are given to you at like a certain level. I think it's like three, maybe. Right, but they're instant. You don't choose. I mean, you can choose them, but in, in a matter of which one you choose depends on how they activate. Like, I think I chose the feat of uh, alert, is mm-hmm. I think, when I chose, where it's just like you get plus five to your... Searching and perception checks and stuff, huh? No, that's not that one. It was, it's plus five to initiative, and then you can't be caught off guard. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I was like, that's pretty good for a healer. I'm that's like, true. Oh, oh, yeah. I'll take it. For a cleric healer, that's a good position to play. You know, that's the shoulder position, you know. See, I, I always like playing healers because, especially cleric, because, I mean, yeah. they get cool abilities plus oh, yeah. healing. And their defense is nuts, you know. Well, and sometimes. They, like, when you start off at first, it's usually garbage. But then well, when yeah, you, whenever yeah. you slowly build up, you're right. like, I'm good now. Yeah, when you, well, when you become a really effective cleric, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're built buff. more. Plated, but magical with healing, too. It's, it just takes a while to get to that stage. Definitely. But. You know, it's like, well, it's like any game you play. You know, the healers are usually pretty hard, you know, to, to level up and get good. You know, they're real, what do you call it? They're real squishy at first. I always got high school curve. Yeah, yeah. But so uh, I chose the he- or the cleric. I was only healer of like a party of six. So I was like, can I get an extra spell slot? He goes, no, it's broken. I'm like, all right, sure, whatever. I'm like, I just asked. Jeez. I mean, you got six people doing whatever they want. Yeah. I'm like, I can't heal everyone. Yeah. What's your heal like? One die four that early on. One die six maybe. Yeah, it's like one d four, one d six, and then I have like two or three healing spells at the beginning, and I only have like two or three spell slots at the beginning. So it's kind of like. Yeah, I heal you or heal him, and yeah. I heal him. Then y'all are screwed, <laughs> or I can die, or, and then y'all get healed. Like so, I, yeah. So whenever like I got knocked out one time, everyone's like low health. I'm like, sorry, I can't do anything about it. I'm, I'm over here laying down unconscious. Yeah, those are the worst. I'm like, oh, thanks, dude. Thanks, cleric. Thought you had my back. Or the guy who always, you know, what is it, Leroy Jenkins is. He just runs out on his own. Yeah, yeah. And then he's over there, heal me, heal me, come over here and heal me. Be like, look, I'm way more in position to bash this creature in the head with my mace. I'll get to you in a minute. Hopefully you don't bleed out. If you do, quit rushing the goddamn goblin, you know. <laughs> if you do have a cantrip, we're good. Yeah. You, this, you just ran up to this bridge got trolled out you know he's talking about genji's i need healing no oh, yeah uh, he's talking about genji's i need healing reputation where they run out and you're i need healing and it's yeah. like get back over here you idiot uh they don't come back because i was talking about the fact that we're talking about clerics and how the fact that when you build them up they become pretty good yeah and i was talking about the fact that like when we we're playing as a group we had six people who just did whatever they wanted we had this one guy who, who was playing the fighter deal i like, rush out nice. and i'm like all right bye <laughs> But whenever I was building my character, I was asking him, like, can I do chaotic evil? Yeah. He's like, you're not doing a chaotic evil healer. I'm like, yeah, they're not worth my spell slot. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's Wait, hard. Who wouldn't let you? Trauma. Uh, you ever well, ask him if I can do a chaotic evil uh, cleric? And he's like, there's no chaotic evil people in my yeah, game. What does an unholy cleric become? A necromancer? Yeah, I mean, that'd be, that, that's just essentially, like, what you can build your story up to. Be, yeah. be Start as a regular, like... Cleric, you get so good you go can about heal the way. death. You know, go about go about your way, and then <laughs> and then lose lose your faith halfway through, uh-huh. and then you just started learning dark magic and whatnot. Uh-huh. That's kind of what I learning. wanted to do, either that or like a Jekyll Dude, that'd Hyde be type a thing. Fucking great fucking story like, whenever, right there. Why? Whenever he's bringing it up, like I want to do like the whole necromancer. You know, what I want to do is like a Jekyll and Hyde type of thing, where it's uh-huh. two in the same two and one. Yeah. Oh, that that would be really like cool. one <laughs> hand does one, the other. Yeah, like even like that, like. And I was just like, or I can just like try to reanimate, see, heal. Like I can try to do like deceive, like nec- or like necromagic, or just like mm-hmm. I, I use it, but they're like, what happened? It's like eh, nothing. Just don't worry Ram. about it. <laughs> the small ones, a little. Just like see, like charisma boosts. Like secretly <laughs> cast it. Like, yeah. Like I, I like have a side conversation with him. Where like I cast this. Like kind of keep it under. Just, are you gonna heal somebody and then use a little deception with the other hand to make the healing better? But when you do, they become. Like more powerful, like well, more inclined to do your bidding, right? Well, I don't mean it like that's an point, but like I found like a bunch of like homebrew spells. Well, for, you gotta have for, some evil. You well, know, I mean the, the necromagic was like I could buff people's 
uh, abilities. Like I could give him, oh, like I yeah. looked up a necro spell where I could, oh, like you make would his, go that way. Like I could make his like control. unarmed combat like even better. I was like I could cast that and that. Yeah, yeah. maybe like in like he'd be like, oh yeah, you rolled this instead of this. He's like, why? I'm like, don't worry about it. You just do. Well, he's like, like trying to see how long he whispers some encouraging words and like he's the, bolstered with strength. You like know? that's where I wanted to go with it. Yeah. Like I, I, I could do the whole like uh, monster control and all that stuff like that, but I didn't. I don't want to have fun like that. I'd rather have fun like getting through stuff. He's like, no, that's not right. I'm like, whatever. So I ended up playing cleric. But the PHB says you can. The PHB. Yeah. Well, from what I've read, though, is they don't recommend like uh, using like two different kind of spells like that. It's because you have to split it like 60 40, 50 50, whatever yeah. you want to do. Like they don't recommend that. But, but I mean, I, I don't care about recommended. Right. You do it because you want to fucking do it. You know? So. I mean, I'd probably die, but that'd be fun. <laughs> we'll see where it takes us in the world of RNG, you know? Uh, I was uh, talking to uh, Devin Joe with Deacon Jones uh, the other day uh, through texting. And uh, I don't know why I'd like to talk <laughs> well, I was like, what, what are you talking about? Like a phone in a cup? Like with the, cu- the cup and string? Or just yeah, like, from my house all we the We were day talking on house. the phone. Did you picked up like, ring, 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 ring. He's over here like vibrating somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Hello. Um, uh, he was talking about how uh, he still wants, like, he really wants to play. I kind of want to invite him to Exodus and see if he wants to come play Exodus with us. I still need to make a one-off character. Every Every Sunday. It's every Sunday or around preferably 3 p.m., but between 3 to 4 p.m. Well, if I can do it on Discord, I'd be perfectly fine with that. Because I can just hop online and just put my headset on and just pull up a uh, roll 20, right? Mm, your Your dice. No, I mean, Roll20 is like the website where you pull everything up. Or do y'all not use that for we that? We don't use that. We just use pen and paper on the Exodus character sheet. Oh, yeah. Okay. Analog. Hell yeah, <laughs> man. Hell yeah. Well, man, there's there's like, no other uh, way to fucking do it, dude. I mean, digital, doing it like that is, is, try is convenient as fuck, but it's just... Huh? Try a website called OrcPub. It's just a character save database. Well, yeah. But, I mean, that's what pen and paper is for. I guess if you want to go, not bring it to the future. I don't want to go to the future. Just pen and paper is a lot easier. It's more. So what? What are you can, so you can, you What can, are the differences in five point oh from three point five? Do you know or four point oh that you know? Like, what are the major like gameplay? Like, e? how does it flow? Like between like four and five e, like the changes yeah. that they made. Yeah. It Could, was a lot about a lot of the rules changed with. With a character creation, I right. think is what it was, and, and uh, I think it was like. Some I wasn't really sure was about it? what all really changed, but I know the biggest was character creation and using your abilities and stuff. I think right. it See, was because they made it easier, re- made it easier for you to build your character and use your abilities rather than in four E. Was they? It was kind of complicated. Yeah, I think yeah. that's like I think character creation was the biggest. Didn't they also say they gave, they gave a lot more freedom to the players instead of the DM instead? Like I that? think so. Well, that, you know, that would be a good because sometimes your DMs are just little prima donnas. You know? Yeah. And well, that's just, that's a lot of them though. Is once they get that power, they're like, I, I can see, kill you if you're all playing Monopoly and the dick gets pissed and flips the board. You can just reset and play Monopoly. If your DM does it and just like you know slaps the board clean you and says y'all are all dead, start, start over completely. and. Completely. You can't just like oh. reanimate. So now you got to get a six new hour. backstory. You got to go yeah. through the you know player's handbook. You got to yes. go through everything. You know mage's handbook. You, dude, I was trying to build a psionic cleric, and it was interesting because I had the psionic book, the three point five, and I was reading through it. Or would it be able to carry it? It's ancient. Jesus. I'd have to start Carry over. over? Cause that's, well, that's, that's like the, advanced, isn't it? Because uh, it the D&D Beyond actually incorporated some of the older spells into the newer games. Right, but but if you want to bring a 5, that's advanced, isn't it? Because mm-hmm. what you'd have to do is you'd have to like... That way, so like sorry, I don't mean that no, I'm cutting you off. It's just like advanced D&D is hard as fuck. Mm. If you want to bring that character in, you'd have to do a lot of research how to bring it into oh, yeah. 5e. Yeah. Fuck. See what the crossovers would be. Because I know they probably... Because it, it seems like it would be really OP if done properly, but... I guess it all depends if your DM would allow it. Yeah, if I survived long enough. You know. Yeah, so if like your DM allows it, then go for it. If not, then... Well, that well, sucks. See, I had see a really the thing. cool idea. Well, yeah. if you're playing a 3.5 or an advanced character and they don't allow it, then you're playing with the wrong people, probably. Yeah. You're playing well. with the kitty grades. Yeah, 
just like me. I'm like, I'm not that, that great at it. I mean, nobody is. No, everybody, that's the point. I mean, majority of the time that I've ever played with anybody ever, it was their first time playing. Yeah. Ever. That's the problem, though, is the fact you never really play outside of that because everyone always gets so frustrated with the, the new players. And it's like, oh, well, I don't want to play anymore. Well, you know, it's just like, you know, anything, even with video games. And, of course, you know, there's that, you know. I mean, it's the noobs even there, too. Yeah. You know, they're frustrating. But, you know, it's fun. It's fun to imagination land yourself in a tavern. You know, always. That's how we met, right? All of us, the first time with the trauma store, we all met in a tavern. Yeah, that's usually what happens. But you, you and I just happened to be this, like a short joke, and we kept going with it. Cause <laughs> we did. We were. Because uh, I was playing a cleric, he was playing a monk, so they're like, all right, can you like calm your son down? <laughs> oh, yeah. <'cause, laughs> that's right, because I, uh, I was a halfling monk, yeah. and I was tiny, and yeah. uh, apparently he was my dad. Did you win a lot just, in the nut punch? No. Nah. I, but I ended up being a mean drunk in, in a new drunken style, and I oh, was yeah. always drunk. The, the, the no. best story, though, was... Uh, the Napoleonic him, monk. Yeah. <laughs> him and uh, Patrick's character went out drinking, and uh, it was uh, Devin Emmanuel and I, we stayed... We left, right? I don't remember. This is when y'all, like... I have the recordings, and we can go back and listen to it one day. Because you were... Uh, Put those out. If you, were, you guys ever want to listen to that. You were made the joke where uh, Emmanuel picked... Uh, Patrick up the throne when you started puking immediately. Oh my god, that you were an nice. unwashed halfling drunk. No, okay, so oh. okay, so we were the stench uh, made him buff. We went instantly. out, we went out and drank, and came back to the to the house where this guy was letting us stay for the night. I was and like, I need a spell slot, so I need to retire later, guys. <laughs> and like, uh, sleepy cleric. Uh, his character, right? he was a small cat, right? Like, he was about the size of a hobbit. Yeah, I think he was the, uh, t- he was a tiefling rogue, I think. No, he, no, 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 we, no, we were still playing beta. He was playing the, just a halfling rogue. You were playing your real character because you already had one made. No. I was, was playing Dork Cleric. Was that during and, the beta? And, and then both Devin and Manuel were playing fighters. Was that during beta? Yeah. Where we ran through the sewers? Because that's when we were inside the room still, not, and uh, Remy and or hadn't joined us yet, so we went in the garage. Oh, man. So you 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 were a, a small monk, and there was also a small rogue, and then a cleric. Well, th- we're just using the pre-made sheets. Here, yeah. I made it character made from, from a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And I was reusing uh, uh, somebody that I had made a long time ago, and then I just tweaked it to the. Uh, current stats did, did you did you find it difficult to do that it was pretty easy a little bit you had to give up some cool stuff or gain yeah, just, some different stuff yeah i kind of just pretty much had to wipe it and start over box oh, well. background wise i started completely over i had a really good background story for him well you also had a 5e character going into 5e though not mm-hmm. 3.5 going into 5 fair enough you know. Oh yeah, I did have a five E going to five E. That's right, because my first character when we did play it was during it was a five E. Because yours in the It was at the beginning of when five E was released. That's whenever. That's, nuts. I, that's whenever I uh, did that character. I'll say I had bought the five E starter kit. Yeah, I no, that was a four E starter kit. Was it? I thought it was did that come with? Did that come with the DMG in the player's handbook or what? No, it came with. Uh, it gave me like a little preview of the Dungeon Master's Guide because that's yeah. what the little flip booklet was, and it gave you the stupid goblin story. Yeah, mm. I played that so many times. I already know to mess with people about that one. Mm-hmm. What? How much are the five bueno books books themselves? Yeah, uh, fifty if you go get them out in retail online. Each. Yeah, online like say through uh, us. Through, yeah, <laughs> I know <laughs> through us. It's like thirty. Uh, yeah, twenty five to thirty bucks. Okay, yeah, yeah. Go through us for the brand new ones. They're still only yeah. like twenty five thirty. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so that's where well, I got my player's handbook. Hell yeah, and, and discounted. So it's just like yeah, fuck yeah, yeah. But whenever they thought we were like uh, father and son was when we were actually really started playing though, because much as the actual uh, cleric and not the dwarf cleric. Oh, I'm groovy at the moment. But yeah, I was like, so I need a spell slot, so I'm retiring. And then uh, him and Patrick were like, man, we're going to keep on drinking. So we, we came in and, and we're Why out. did he start feeling sick, though? That's what I'm trying to remember. No, like, I, someone brought up the fact that, like, we moved him after he, a night for drinking, so we thought he would, like, nap. stir him up a little <laughs> bit and start puking. 
And I think, oh yeah, because they were fucking with us. They wanted to fuck with us. Manuel wanted to fuck with us. And no, we all did. We we all completely agreed. We're like, all right. And then uh, Charles was like, yeah, I'll allow it. At first, so wait, you were technically asleep, but you were metagaming and instigating a bar fight. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Oh, no, that. Okay, so the bar fight was another. That's another. That's another okay. Thing. That's another that was when we actually started. This is when. Yeah. Uh-huh. Was, this is when we were like when the guy got launched and the other guy. Yeah, this, this, was, this is when we were practicing, learning right. mechanics, learning our characters. Dress rehearsal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Hell yeah! And uh, so we yeah. decided Emmanuel picked them up, and we think he rolled perfectly, and everything was good like that. So we threw him on top of uh, Vito's character because he started because he started moving around in the motion, shut yeah. up his belly, and just. And I forgot how the topic of him out. puking came up, but we're like <laughs> the story of how he threw up in my house. I, 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 he started projectiling like that, and so uh, they threw him on top of me. He started throwing up on me, and it was just. Oh, so they, he was I already I, puking when they picked him I think up. I, I think I asked if I could roll for damage to hit him in the face, and yeah. I did, and I hit him really hard yeah. in the face. And then the guy comes up, and he's like, What the hell happened? He breaks here? into horse stance and they boot a palm in the face. And they then uh, push out, right? the puke back at him, just <laughs> holding with the choke him with his own no. puke. The best part, though, was. Emmanuel lied saying like they were trying to like fill up on each other and he was like oh, yeah. I don't believe this I'm like can I back up that story and I rolled a nat 20 <laughs> <laughs> well I guess you can <laughs> yeah that was the best part of that story yeah that was yeah. really that, that, that really was just like really like come on a midget toss and drunks we wasted like 30 minutes on that scene god damn it like come on like my character is not like, <laughs> it's not cool monks don't hobbits aren't like that I mean they can be then they party a lot. I don't know, you know. They get really jolly, don't they? Mm-hmm. Red cheeked. They're always weary of partying and getting too drunk around bigger creatures. So yeah, yeah. Well, my they gotta uh, mind their feet, you know. Yeah, but <laughs> my I made it to where my character is just like. Uh, so the background for my monk was that he was part of a monastery, and his teacher killed the monastery's abbot. Whoa. And um, and I looked up to my teacher as like he was my master. He, like, I learned everything from him. He was just like I wanted to be like him. I wanted to learn more from him. You know, he was just like right. I wanted to you know follow his footsteps. And whenever he did that and betrayed the monastery, I out of anger and just frustration, I went out to seek revenge. And my anger drove me to drinking. And I had never been one to drink. So my anger drove me to drinking and I would just sit there pounding and just end up being in bar fights all the time and just traveling around looking for him. And then, yeah. then my journey ended up being nothing and ended up becoming a drunk, just traveling town to town, just fucking bullshitting, basically yeah. saying I'm looking for him. But in reality, I'm just stumbling through town and drunk as fuck. Using it as an to excuse the... to stumble and drink. Right? Yeah, 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 exactly. And so yeah. one day in this town, this is where I, I meet. The uh, the drunken master, the, the, who where I learned my drunken style from, and nice. I challenge him to a fight. Basically, Jackie Chan drunken ma- yeah, master yeah. scene. And, oh, really? Yeah, and I challenge him to a fight, uh, and he uh, puts me into my place, and I follow him. Uh, he walks off, but I end up following him. I'm doing the old house. drunken stumble adventure. Uh, I've already been on that a decade or so. Yeah. I teach you a thing. Who are you gonna come into my tavern and pretend to be the local drunk? I'm obviously <laughs> the local drunk. Prepare to defend yourself. What are they gonna philistine or whatever? Imposter. <laughs> And he hits yeah. you with a drunken backhand to the nose. So yeah, so uh, and it, that's uh, how I. That's whenever I learned the, my uh, yeah. my drunken style, and then that was like my main backstory for Fuck my yeah. character. Is that that's why I'm always drunk, and now I I'm always drunk because I enjoy it for fun, and it makes me feel great. It's not because I'm angry and sad any, or anything. That right. I'm past that, but now it helps me with my fighting style. So right. I'm always a cheerful drunk. I drink it because water's for flushing shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good way to put it. Yeah. And then whenever we've actually started playing as a big group, I forgot how the whole bar fight started happening, but I don't know. The, the, like, the barkeep was like, all right, keep your child at bay. I'm like, all right, don't, don't make me tell but, mom. But somebody had to agitate me because I just had an egg on the fight because my character loved fighting. Yeah. The only way to settle anything was by the fist. <laughs> Let's see, that's the thing. Okay, so you're a hobbit monk. Right. If you've never met any little people, their first inclination is the nut shot. 
Like that would always you would just like strong arm drunken Buddha palm somebody in the ball sack like instant. It, that you had would have to have a modifier to see that they would have to save against that because like no, it would so. catch you off guard. They're just oh, 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 little, you know. You call them peck. Then take off peck. You peck this pow. <laughs> You know, yeah, and, so what I like, what I like doing, so I, I'd like to just surprise busted. people and, oh, yeah. and sweep them off their feet, and because well, my kick. character's agility was just like Uppercut crazy as fuck. Tank. <laughs> so I would, I would just like to surprise people and end up a fucking climbing up on top of them, right. and like kicking them in the face, and then jumping all the way well, down. Go on, find an Android shit. sixteen or something. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I keep cutting you off. Go ahead. No, that was really about the whole story. Like, I don't remember how the whole bar started, started happening, but. We start playing Joker like you and me as father and son kind of thing. We should have started uh, with next if we ever play again. If we do that, the, those characters again, uh-huh. we should try to like. <laughs> we should be people that are fucking like really shitty and act as homeless and beg for money. But in reality, we we have all this money from being a part of the group or whatever. But every time any op- opportunity we have to. To go out and in the town that we stop in, just and panhandle, become, yeah, 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 like okay, just, okay just drift I, a little bit, yeah, or or try to just scheme people, just yeah. like just scam people for fucking money. He's like, oh, I can do this for you. The psionic it, cleric who has all these crystals that are just bunk. He's like, buy my stones and just make and extra it's money. Like it's really all about the grip. Yeah, and we're just fucking yeah. just sitting there, just drunk, and just pound shit as we're trying to sell shit and just fucking scam people for their money. How'd you sell them that? Oh, I was a piece of sandstone polished with. <laughs> An ass close, you know. <laughs> Full butt it. It's all about the subject. 25 gold, you know. <laughs> so how did you become a psionic monk? I don't know that I'm really psionic, <laughs> but I found a quartz cave. It was probably an old gold mine or something, and I meditated in it. And I was just like, I, 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 I'm not, I didn't really meditate. Yeah. I, just, I just drank his shit. I and found I some out. mushrooms, <laughs> went and tripped out in this quartz cavern, and... Uh, Came out one with the universe, you know. <laughs> Went to the portal and never came back out. <laughs> and then his, and he has like, really bad, like, psychic jets. He's like, I'm going to use my foresight. And he throws it. This is what's going to happen. And it's a now, completely wrong yeah, thing. completely the opposite. <laughs> but but then like, always I told you so. All I think of is, like, whenever he's walking out of that cave the next day, he just falls on all fours and just, like, vomits profusely. Just... <laughs> And as he's telling the story, he's all, he's actually lying, and it just flashback, and it shows it really happens. Yeah, that'd be funny. The guy standing there, that never happened. Get on my flashback. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or you just look up and it's <laughs> make it as funny move. as possible. Chew as many mushrooms as possible and fall on all floors and <laughs> just like mow out a line of you know, cobalt <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> He's on a chair, just sliding back. <laughs> yeah. Where do you get the rolling chair from? It's part of the experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really, he's really just sitting on a log floating down the river but he, and throwing up at the same time, but it's not as he really thinks it is. He's already thinks he's in, off, in like some weird office, just or work his desk job. <laughs> Selling paper for Dunder Mifflin. <laughs> you peel a rolling chair. And yeah, just you sit on start carving it. And it catches him like in mid puke. He's like, "How did you get a rolling chair in there? <laughs> Where do things have happened, my friend?" That's your question out of all this. Yeah. What would, what would he get out of that? I feel like, what would be this, the 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 lesson out of all that? Just never eat random mushrooms yeah. whenever you're really hungry in the woods. Never yeah. do that. <laughs> Unless you're with friends. The real lesson is: How do you invent a rolling chair in a society that doesn't have one? Hmm. Don't ask questions. <laughs> I'm psionic. It's from the future. I saw it. Nostradamus, buddy. I'm so psychic, my puke can invent things that haven't been invented yet. By me. Or anyone. I didn't know that's just a rolling matter. chair. Or the wheel. I guess the wheel was existence and the chair existed. Make it all out of wood and stone. Hmm. Could. Use hay for the cushion. Yeah. Use a piece of timber for a break. You have hemp to make chair. sacks. So you can use the sacks and just throw hay and make Cut a little it. padded area on top of the thing and make cushion for it. Make your first computer chairs. And the hip reminds me of like, can I tie the yeah. him to the rope and light up my torch? Sheep. And then fire in the hot box the cave. Dude, the I was like, that doesn't know that. I don't know how that works. What happened? Who, who did that? That's what I was playing with Taylor, Keith, and Kalen. Mm. 
You could play as a cleric who's also a carpenter who really doesn't heal people, but he like will build wheelchairs and crutches for them <laughs> to like hobble along with. Like, I can't really do much. I can like <laughs> set the bone and get you a crutch. And well, what if they're like, but I don't need one. I'm like, this is all I can do. That's all I can do. <laughs> what is he, the Messiah? <laughs> well, you know, he could have a Messiah complex. Except he doesn't. Yeah. He, except he's just a drunk that is a really good exactly. carpenter. You know, we're, <laughs> he's we're, really good at making wheelchairs and right, crutches. Right. I'm a liberal crystal weirdo. He's a, this, you know, wannabe the Lord carpenter cleric guy. You know, and here's a drunken, you know, pickpocket, you know, the nut punching monk. You know, the fucking it's. Uh, he can they they pay me, it. and then you steal the money. There you go. He's selling little whitlands he's done here. Buy my wooden duck. I spent <laughs> hours on it. <laughs> Isn't it the cutest? It's probably old. My grandkids, if I ever had them, would have loved it. <laughs> here, I can't help you. I can set the bone and give you some crutches, but you're on your own after that. <laughs> Here's Next gross. time, don't run off Here's into danger, is- all right? You see a big fucking orc, you keep your ass behind the tank. You kick that wheelchair in fourth gear and you go. <laughs> yeah. Now you go and have a nice yeah. day now, you hear? Yeah. <laughs> nope, he done pissed off the tank. The tank, full frontal, don't go run off the wheel back of the wheelchair. No he goes off a cliff, screaming, <laughs> re-roll. <laughs> Uh, and then that's it's, the end of that character. Yeah. <laughs> and then his twin brother uh, brother was born. He's just Mark Leroy. Oh, that's my cousin. Yeah. <laughs> He's my cousin brother. <laughs> we don't talk about those people. Uh-huh. My cousin brother. It's better than cuspend. But we're just, <laughs> it's not that we're inbred. We're just really good at genetics. So, uh, you know, we combined our DNA in a test tube and then. <laughs> pulled up of like what would that modern what, eugenics what would you call that in that time it's like kind of not source is it source or no yeah, I guess it would be kind of, some kind of magic it has to be some kind of magic well what happened was if I learned anything from Full Metal Alchemist it's probably alchemy my daddy and all four of his brothers all yeah. jacked off into a sheep's bladder <laughs> and then my daddy's wife my mama as far as a ritual at this point, <laughs> this is a ritual casting? Yeah. She runs it in through some, uh, you know, tubing that you would that's attached to the uh, a sheep's bladder there. And she, she just gave herself an artificial insemination. Who knows? It's yeah, just... Uh, every drip of blood is one yeah. egg that just drops. Yeah, it's just one sperm going off in it from a day. Never fucking suspended it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, at the end, it looks like a fucking Hellraiser. Yeah, and they just mix it all, so you know, they'll get some of the genes. Because they're also inbred, you know, you got to have as much variation as possible. Yeah, but you got to throw in some strangers in there. Some strangers. Yeah, imagine, you know, if they paid enough, you know. Ten gold pieces to jizz in this thing and put it in my wife. <laughs> well, the guy's <laughs> like, hey, I'll do it for free. Is it attached to the sheep? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, I could pull it off then. Hell. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's sold. It's sold. You got a fence or a cliff? <laughs> Neither. You do it here in the open. <laughs> Neither. You got to run buck naked and hope you can fall and land it right in there. You got you to do three flips and a somersault and make it in? Look, if you, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever run buck naked at sheep, but they don't tend to turn tail and run. They turn around and buck at you. Head butt your dick. <laughs> so, I'm not going to lie. This guy's I'm, super excited for the sheep part on and everything. Yeah. He just... <laughs> Yeah, especially if you misjudge gender from behind accidentally because it's oh, eaten. Oh, God. Ooh. <laughs> Ram's horns. Got a sheep fetus yeah. over here. No, no, I just, you know. He spent a little too much time in the Middle East. East. <laughs> in the Middle East. You know. You know your character Middle has, East, Missouri. Your, your, your character <laughs> loves sheep. <laughs> you know, he loves all the fuzzy creatures. But it, it left his three wives at home? There's just something about It's like fucking a pillow when you're a 14-year-old, but... It dry hump, it your, dry hump your pillow you know, something happens. It it's like dry humping the thing that becomes your pillow. Yeah, and dry humping your warm pillow. <laughs> Get all this kind what of is it like layer on and just build up and you just morph it? You, you, you grab by the fleece. Oh my god. Unless they're you know, freshly churned then you gotta grab the legs. Or you can grab by the weird skins. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> grab her by the nipples and hang uh, on. That fell in it. There's one time my dad was telling me, like, well, this is, I forgot who it was, but there was, like, this certain race of people that were uh, cowboy boots, and I'm like, why? He goes, so he put the sheep's feet inside the shoe to keep from getting away. 
Oh, a bunch of people say that. They say, why do Texans always wear their boots? Why do farmers wear the boots? Why do roughnecks wear those boots? Why do Scottish people wear the boots? And it's any any high boot, you know, galosh, as it were, the old fishing boots, the leather boots, sailors. Yeah, I, I forgot who he said it was, but yeah, they put the, they're supposedly put the sheep's feet in there to keep them from running away. Yeah, or you catch them at the edge of a cliff so they push back on you. <laughs> where do you find these convenient cliffs? Look, I, mean, I thought that was common knowledge. I thought everyone knew the, the different uh, options when it's coming to tackling some uh, some you know, welcome, some mutton. Welcome to how to fuck yeah. a sheep. Yeah, how to get some mutton pussy right quick here with Professor Possum. Well, now I was out, you know, wandering around the woods the other day. Boy, how do if I didn't come upon a raccoon? They're, called They're a lot feistier than sheep. <laughs> <laughs> They're called coons in these parts. No. No, we whoa, don't call them coons. Whoa, they went to, this is to Philadelphia. It's like, <laughs> it's, like, it's like that episode. No, was it? No, it was in Clark's, Clark's 2 where, where, he, uh, where he calls everybody a porch monkey. Mm. And it's like, my grandma used to say it all the time. She would call me a porch monkey tell me to get off my ass when I'm playing video games. Yeah. <laughs> Quit being a damn porch monkey. Yeah. And then he goes, and she did refer to a broken bottle as a... Not finish that sentence. What? Was it a broken bottle? Where he's like, oh yeah, she burned a broken bottle. It's a knicker knife. Oh, good Jesus. No, I don't remember that. And that was That's, in Clark's too? I think it's like the second line after that. Randall? I don't remember that. Hell yeah, huh? Probably Randall. He is very Randall. Right? Fucking. Hell I haven't yeah. seen Clark's too in forever. I've seen Clark's one, like like the first one a thousand times, but Clark's Ding. two is like, I have, it's like I've probably seen it like, I, like about 15 times. Right, That's where he goes and works at movies, huh? I was thinking, you want to go see a donkey show? What? Where would they go and they go to movies and it's there and Golder and Randall gets all angry and gets into the, you know, what is it, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings argument with that fella? Oh, yeah. And yeah. then they have the donkey show in the in the restaurant. Uh-huh. That's what I was thinking of. You want to see a donkey show? Kinky Kelly and the sexy stud. Yeah. <laughs> My name's Kelly. <laughs> oh, good lord. <laughs> oh, boy, howdy. You're the golden calf, indeed. I, I, my favorite... Of all the Kevin Smiths and with the Jays, is, I like Dogma. I think it's cool. I think it's that underrated. That was, was really good. Dogma rated. Dogma. I mean, dude, what, what was this? It's Severin Snape. And mm-hmm. he like, the Metatron, the highest choir of angels. Yeah, dude, it's, it's cool. It Alan Rickman, rest in peace. You, yeah. you, were, you were a good actor. It wouldn't. Yeah. Dude, what's his name? Chris Rock? Falls. Yeah. From the heaven, he's a he's an apostle, right? Yeah, the thirteenth apostle. Mm-hmm. Uh, they cut him out of the Bible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it makes sense. And he tells the true story of Jesus. Yeah, Jesus was black. Yeah, his hair was like bronze. His hair was like sheep's wool. It was the Middle East two thousand years ago. They hadn't run into no Aryans at all. <laughs> the Vikings, I'm sorry, weren't around in Jerusalem circa zero. They didn't even pop up in history till the hundreds. And that was up there in England terrorizing the little Brits. They were just all pagan, living out in, in their little cottages, you know, worshiping the sun and the rain and the fog because that's all there is in England, you know, probably in the clover. And of course, fucking some sheep. And then here come these golden Vikings. They're like 6'6 six, six and pale and mean. Have you ever seen a movie called uh, The Witch where the witch is spelt with two Vs? Sounds familiar. I want to say you show me that, but I don't think I've seen it. It's like, it's it's a really, really good movie. It was, uh, I think, funded by the Church of Satan. Like Whoa. The official like Church of Satan. Well, which one? I don't know. Levan, Aleister Crowley. I'm not sure. The one that's dark web page. You know, I'm not sure. I don't even know what it's forked into nowadays. To be honest, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. That's all, that's all I really know. Yeah. I mean, I can try to... Google it, Satanism but. confuses me, you know, because it presupposes <laughs> that, yes, there is a God and Satan, but I'm right. choosing the wrong choice because the God that is is a prick. I'm like, yeah, or it's all random, you know, mm-hmm. and he's really not a prick, so you don't have to blame him because, I mean, maybe. Who knows? Did y'all watch any uh, any uh, esports championships this year so far? I've been watching the Killer Instinct ones. They're pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think, uh, what's his name? Amity one or something like that. Amity. 
I didn't even know they had Sleep. esports like championships for Killer Instinct. Oh, dude, I recently watched a Jeff Dam fight, a Def Jam fight for New York competition. And that fighting game, if you don't know it, is perhaps the best game made for PlayStation Two. And it was, it still got a lot of people that were like, I was dude, like, what the second or third one? That's the second one, yeah. And uh, I believe I think Vendetta was the first. Mm-hmm. It's but what made it interesting is it's you know level of fight style customization, you know there were multiple styles yeah. of fighting, and you could choose one and then level it and then pick up another one, and pick up another one and and the way, whoever programmed that, to do the numbers, and also alter, the animation depending on like how heavy of a style you are like even i mean it was so customizable that like it would be really hard for two people's custom character to be exactly the same Mm -hmm. Uh, so it made it really cool and then there was also a cool like reward system that isn't in a lot of fighting games you know where like you actually and then you improve you know your appearance improves your Fightability you get, improves. You kind of get like loot boxes in a sense where you get like different yeah, things. To an extent, you get paid for the matches and then you go out oh, and you, you can go get like the... tattoos and, and, yeah. and clothes. And, and that adds abilities to your character. Yeah. Like certain Sometimes stats. Sometimes a little charisma. Maybe you went over the crowd a little more. Mm-hmm. You know, pushing people into the crowd was cool. I don't know. I just kind of wish they'd do a relaunch of it and yeah, put I never some new technology to it. I mean, I mean it's, it's worth if you got any spare coinage to just dick off some uh you know Go video game PS2. nostalgia just get you on the online or one of those you know game and repurposing stores because they're probably doing pretty bad they're probably getting beat by us but uh so you go into a game over or whatever if they have them if you can find one you can probably get them for like like what ps2 for like what 50 bucks now like the pawn shop maybe or less than that yeah yeah like the, game supply is probably like 50 bucks or something didn't they make another one for the ps3 I'm not sure. Yeah, but yeah, I don't think so. I don't even have I a PS3 because anymore. it didn't. It didn't catch on the same way, right? It didn't have the same fervor, so I doubt it was. I was because like, I thought they a were... remake of the same platform. It might have been a relaunch of a similar game, but I don't think it was done by the same team. Because I want to say like a game came on the same name for the PS3, but it oh, did yeah. terrible. It's Vendetta, right? And Vendetta is not very good, I don't think, or maybe the third one, but. Yeah, Fight for New York, is, it's got a good storyline, too, you know, I think. I mean, if you play for it five or ten times, you know, you'd get tired of it. But it just had something that most fighting games didn't, you know. Yeah. And fighting games have always kind of fallen down in the actual story department of the actual how am I fighting all these people, right? It's always like, you know, even Mortal Kombat didn't even try. They're just like, we're just going to stack these pictures on top of each other and you choose one, you know. Yeah, you choose which tower to go through. Fart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, once you got there, you got your difficulty choosing. Mm-hmm. Did you ever get to play Mortal Kombat 1 on an arcade machine? I think they have that at uh, Brash, don't they? I think so, if not Neil's, because they have that giant emulator. Yeah. Whoa. Really? Yeah, there's, there's still uh, arcades. So, uh, Brash is a brewery that has a bunch of old arcades. Cool. Yeah, great. It's, it's <laughs> fucking awesome. It's 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 one of my favorite ones here in town. That's it's awesome. And Neil's is a bar that is an arc, kind of like an arcade bar. Right. And uh, they have like, they have like ping pong. They have a couple like one or two arcade machines. I know they have like an old Pac Man machine, and then they have like a little living room setup where you can pull out the old consoles they have like a super nintendo gamecube and nintendo 64 and you just plug it in and start playing games most of the time people are playing mario kart or smash brothers yeah, and then they have like two table for, uh, <laughs> tabletop stuff too yeah, yeah. We'll pull out halo one oh the they also have a, they also have a wall of comics uh, you can read while you're there um that sounds pretty cool. It sounds yeah. like they don't. The need only the only bummer thing is, is it's far as fuck. It's on the other side of the George R. Brown. It's also small, and yeah, it's pretty small. But it, it's it's a really cool environment. Like oh, it's it's a badass fucking thing. Like behind the bar, they have like a Yoda, uh, really? like a big ass like Yoda statue. It's really cool. Mm. They they have a Jar Jar with his head cut off. Mm. And yes, <laughs> hell yeah. yeah, it was. It's really fucking cool. It's cool. There's a, it's a couple of like cool little hidden gems like that. How would how would Yoda phrase if he was like if he was a bartender? How would he phrase asking about a drink? 
What is it? Would it, would it be drink? Would you like what? Or would it be? <laughs> would he do the what? <laughs> no, it'd be like uh, like uh, uh, drink you want. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> <What is it? clears throat> that's the only way I can think. Some of, of the hard scotch, you know. <laughs> but that's what. Uh, Give me uh, a McClellan. What I can think of for the way. Uh, what do you like? Whenever somebody comes in like uh yeah just it's like tonight like tonight yeah. how you do yeah yoda's or, grammar rules is, is, yeah you know, yeah that'd be syntax. actually really funny as, as yoda as a, as a bartender yeah you could just you know hook up a little voice thing to him where he was like you pre-record some sounds you like you remember those yak backs yeah you're a dick no you're a dick <laughs> <laughs> yeah home alone talk back yeah, dude, there's another, uh, like, arcade bar off of Washington called uh, Kung Fu Saloon. Are well, there... Is that what that is? I've always, Kung Fu I, Saloon. I've heard it's really good. I've never been there. Yeah, it's an arcade bar. I was wondering what it was. Uh, That's a pretty good name. That sounds like you walk in, though, and you start strutting your, you know, Mortal Kombat skills. And yeah, you, they have... Well, they have... I don't know. Really last time I was there... Last time I was there, they had, like, NFL Blitz arcade. They had, yeah. they had like, the... The four-person one? No. No, not the four person one. It was just a single one. Um, they have like a uh, like actual like Mario Kart like arcade. Oh. They have like four chairs nice. or something. So like Game Busters. Yeah, uh, they have like ping pong. They have like a small assortment of like uh, arcades along the back wall and like a, a foosball. Uh, and then, but I think Brash is probably the best one to go to because the beer is really good. And they put up a, uh, since you deleted your Facebook, they put up a, uh, a an event for the 25th, uh, a Goza release plus a, a album release for this band that's in town that they're going to be performing live there on 25th at noon. New schedule is going to be kicked in, so I'll be getting off at fucking 9, 30, 10 o'clock. I'll be able to go, so Hell yeah. stoked. It's going to be hot as fuck, but it's going to be worth it. I'll probably ask off the 26th. Huh? I'll probably ask off the 26th, just to be sure. Yeah, might as well. Last time we were there for a concert was Spirit of Drift, right? Right there. That, that sticker right there, Spirit of Drift. It was for one of their stout releases. Which one was it? Firewalker. That was a Firewalker release. That was for your birthday. Yeah. Whoa. They were, they were badass. They were really fucking cool. They had their EP on sale for, with them for like 12 bucks. I was like, fuck, I'm going to buy some stickers and this EP, support you guys. They were fucking cool as shit. Hell yeah. I haven't listened to it yet. It's just sitting downstairs at the collection. but <laughs> It's worth a check out anyway. Yeah. It's always good to have the music. One day. One day. <laughs> we usually turn that record player on every once in a while. Hell yeah. Not all the time. But when we do, it's fucking, we're blasting it. Oh yeah. Do you ever go up and give it a cheeky... No. Yeah, I know. That's a good way. <laughs> it whopped. Yeah. yeah. It's that not, is it's, belt driven, not direct driven. Do not touch that record. It's not even mine to, yeah. to do that. So it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's cats. Yeah, that's, yeah definitely. Yeah. That's, that's all hers. All yeah. That entire collection downstairs, that's all hers that she kind of got from her parents and then picked out what she wanted from her parents' old yeah. records. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good That's good shit. You know, that's She's got some good shit. Records. Anything in vinyl? I kind of missed the old vinyl electronic scene. It was really mm-hmm. cool. I don't even think you can buy turntables anymore, really. Yeah, you can. You can. They, didn't Technique stop making the 1200? No. I'm not sure about that, but that whole that whole record vinyl thing is like I mean, been back for oh yeah, a while now. Got it's, some. No, like now it's like you can get it. You can get fucking vinyl records at Barnes and Noble. It's like it's like heavily in now like oh, yeah. fucking target i think carries some vinyl records yeah we're gonna start carrying them soon and even um movie exchange gonna start carrying some too yeah like everybody everybody's carrying records you can get them anywhere now you Hooray. don't have to go Hipsters. to fucking yeah <laughs> yeah you don't have <laughs> to go out to fucking because it all started yeah. with fucking urban outfitters they yeah. started like oh we're gonna try to put records in our store we're gonna try to be cool and do it hastings like, used to have it but then they got went out of business mm-hmm. so. but i mean there's record shops in town like yeah. i named three of, of them yeah you know they're, they're one of them's in the heights one of them's over by uh like south kirby over by uh 59 and then the other one is Deep End Records at uh, fucking off of Telephone Road uh, uh, in Third Ward. Mm. There's also, like, a lot of video games are doing them now as limited runs for the vinyl records. Like, 
album like or soundtrack. The soundtrack. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. There was this one that I there was this they were doing a repress of uh, Doom's. Uh, I think it was Danger Doom or. Uh, I think it was Danger Doom, the one where they did with the uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force tracks in it and stuff like that. Oh. Uh, they were doing a repress, like, limited edition, like, special, like, record set. It was, like, like 50 bucks or some shit, but nice. it would have been, like, over 100 bucks shipping it from overseas. Cause so, like, all the different, like, lyrics that they put on Meat Wad and Freylock before they got the ones they wanted or what? Um, no. So, like, he did this uh, album where they have, like... Uh, uh, tracks with like the voice to act, the voice actors in in the like with like little like voice lines of them talking to each other like kind of like a skit within nice. the song like uh like master shake is one where he like does them where he calls them a couple of times it does it like tw- two or three times in the album where <laughs> he calls them he's like hey doom it's uh it's shake i'm calling you about the about that track that we're supposed to do, you know, you know, you like my rhymes. So he yeah. starts. He says something really like yeah, shitty. Yeah, master shaking. And yeah. yeah, and he's like, he's like, he's like, you never reach me. Call me, doggy. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just, um, and at the end, it's whenever like the last call he makes is whenever he's kind of like bummed out because he went with somebody else's, uh-huh. and he's just like, I thought we were cool. But yeah, it's whatever. I'm still up for doing whatever you want to do. Just does Meat Lad get on the track? Cause, um, yeah, he yeah. does it uh, for the Aqua Teen Hunger Force song at the very beginning. Uh, he's like, he comes in, and then Carl <laughs> comes in, and he's like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. He's like, and he's like, "I'm rhyming with the flows, and my, like it's something with my hose." And and he's like, "What's like?" He's like, "You call that music?" He's like, "That's not music. You need to listen to something badass, like like Thirty Eight Special." You know, <laughs> he, you know, he's just like something badass, like Ariel Speedwagon. <laughs> yeah, Ariel <laughs> Speedwagon. <laughs> yeah, and then the way that song opens up is badass. I'll I'll play it after. I'll play yeah, it for yeah. you after the show, dude. It's a fucking it. badass. Do you remember song, that ATHF man? episode where they have the the sirens ah, and Carl gets his nipples cut off <laughs> are you talking about the pickle, the pixelated guys that come from the moon are those the not the moon nights no, no those no, are moon nights no, okay. No, 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 no. so okay so what happened it's man, like season anything. three their landlord is the old decrepit like zombie guy right mm. okay he, he buys the house and then some like a dead guy and two sirens move in and they when they talk they're all you know with the oh sirens are like like yeah. essentially like mermaids right they're, they're, they're like sing and then lead people to yeah their, to their water death, death. Yeah. yeah depending doom take them to Davy Jones yeah uh, Davy Jones is shepherds you know and anyways Carl's just really drunk do 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 singing Zeppelin with his tits cut off at the end <laughs> then the credits go. That was a good fucking show, dude. Uh, it's not responding, but we're going to keep going because it might still be capturing. Aqua Teen Force. When did it stop responding? I don't Hunger. know. I just looked over and it said it's not responding, but it just happened last time with uh, Dragon Slayer and oh. Cole, and it still captured shit. Um, Are there any new... Uh... You know, updates on Overwatch that you're interested in? I mean, that are, that are... There was a Summer Games event, but I don't really, like... I've I don't know. I've, I've been playing I've been playing Overwatch but not as much. Did as, y'all try to compete in it at all or nah. get your rank high enough on it? I'm com- not good like, enough. Yeah. Really? No. Godly. If, even if I tried, I'd probably be good enough either. Well, no, I doubt I would be. I, mean, I know I wouldn't. And then I, are I started. Serious. I started playing it on PC as well. And oh it's yeah. Like, it's a little tougher for competitive. It's a little it. way more annoying for sure in competitive. But. Uh, it's still fun. I mean, the summer games, the summer event happened, starts today. It started like an hour before you got here. Oh, for real? Mm-hmm. Like today is the launch mm-hmm. and they didn't pay us for that plug? <laughs> right. We need to tell them first. And I, um, but nah. so what are we doing here? Let's, let's, let's get to qualifying. Go, go play some Lucio Ball. Oh, do you think it's going to be competitive again? It is. Sweet. People were talking about that, how they got kicked out. <laughs> Sweet, and they're like, we're, we're looking into it. Cool. So, uh, do you know the character Lucio? Which one is it? He's the uh, okay in this picture. He's the guy with the yellow dreads and right. the green tank top. Right, he looks like a Brazilian football player. He is. Yeah, he is. But he's a he's a DJ, oh. and he rolls around on skates, and he has like his gun is like it, like his sound waves. Like yeah, it's sound waves. And uh, what you do in Lucio ball is you it's essentially soccer. Uh-huh. It's three v three soccer, um, and you've 
push around this big ass fucking soccer ball and you use your uh your your extra I forgot what it is like your L two I think is what it is on PS two or whatever PS four and he like launches like his it's like an extra like launch of the ball and it's essentially it's just soccer right for the, like Rocket League for the, yeah you but, the but with just just Lucio whoa yeah it's it's a lot of fun that sounds cool I like it. Which one of your you got this poster over here with this anniversary that a lot of viewers might have? That was What's your favorite from, character on there? Who do you use uh, the most? Who do you think is the most? As of recently? Yeah. Well, who have I been using the most recently? Well, that feller with the cloak and the mask looks pretty cool. Opposite, the, I guess, the primary healer, huh? Yeah, that voice actor, you remember? Uh, uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends? Oh, uh-huh. yeah. Blue, Re- uh, Blue Regard. That guy? That's the, that's, that's the voice actor for that guy, for Reaper. The guy with the cloak and the white mask. Oh, yeah? That's that's Blue. Whoa. <laughs> if you hear it, it's like it's 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 funny, because all I can think of is just Blue. Whoa. That was a good... That, that's another really good fucking old cartoon on, from Cartoon Network is Foster's Home from Imaginary Friends. Yeah, I like, I like two what, stupid dogs. What, yeah, what do I like? Awesome. Be, that took me a while to get into it was Flapjack. Flapjack! I it took love, me a while to get into it. I love Flapjack. That was a wild show. Oh, I it was really, so oh, weird, it was like so the dark. art style they chose for it. Dr. Bob. I, I only watched it whenever I would go over to Cat's and I cut um, surgery. When Cat and I first started dating, like it was still on, like, on Cartoon Network and like after school I'd go hang oh, out Bobby. she'd be watching it. Bobby Captain Knuckles is down at the candy bar. You know? The art style was so weird for it, though. Well, uh, it was interesting. I liked watching... Like, like Marshmallow Seas. I wonder if oh, you can Captain. find it anywhere, like on Hulu or something. Uh, dude, I have all streamers. I can't find it. Really? Mm-hmm. Like, not even on Cartoon Network's thing itself? No, I don't have that one. Maybe. I don't know. I Let's, bet you they have it on there. The best I can find is like... Along with like Hong Kong Fooey and know, Two Stupid Dogs. Modest Mouse did a version of the theme song. That they only use for like one episode, like the pilot, and then they change the song for Flapjack. The Mad- marvelous misadventures of Flapjack. Yeah, yeah. I could, yeah. I can see that happening. I love the way they handle it. Style and see, the music. Flapjack is just this, you know, he's this poor orphan, and he's being cared for by a whale and a drunk that they have turned his alcoholism disease into diabetes. Yeah, pretty and much. He eats and drinks candy voraciously. It might as well be four kids. You know, yeah, and oh, they're the worst of the poor. They're they're the kids that live at the fucking uh, at, out at the dump. You know, they're they're the, the kids on the outskirts of town for sure. Poor flapjack. I mean, he don't even get to go to school or nothing. He doesn't really have any other friends his age, right? And he gets that little puppy. That's the cutest thing that happens. A you know, little old lady. But, you know, they're always in search of Candied Island, you know. Uh, oh, listen here, Flapjack. Yeah, dang, wooden-handed Captain Knuckles. Cartoon Network, the, the, the cartoons that they have on there now compared to 2000, uh, like, 5 to 2009. Or they might as well say eight years ago. Uh, yeah, eight years well, ago. Even, even, I mean, you look at, okay, so when I was a kid, Ren and Stimpy had, was, like, fresh, right? And then... You had... Did you ever see the adult party cartoon version of it? Which one? Ren and Stimpy. They came out, like, 10, 15 years later. I think it was, like, an MTV special where they came Mm. out, like, the unedited, Uh uncut. They basically gave the creator, like, full, like, reign or, like, just, like, did not... Do whatever you want. Yeah, pretty much. Gave him whatever whatever he wants and it became really weird and... Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, God, I, I regret watching those episodes, but <laughs> why? Yeah. They're awesome. I was like yeah. 14, 15. I, I was like, what the hell was, am I, I mean, watching? it was dark. I mean, it really was for, I mean, the age of the kids that were watching it. They were real young. I was real, real young. And Ren's floating around so in it's space. It's like 91, and, right? Yeah, I was, I was like five. So, you know, when I can first remember really watching cartoons, like your first cartoon memories. So I was just being born that yeah, year. It's like I was Ren born and, the year, I guess, Ren and yeah. Stimpy came out. Ren and Stimpy, and then Liquid Television on MTV, and then so you had Aeon Flux and oh, Venus yeah, and they, Butthead. When MTV used to do anime and yeah, shit like that. Yeah, they had an animated... It was pretty cool. And they still played music, of course. So mm-hmm. they had enough. When it was about music. Well, yeah. It was still music television. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even Beavis and Butthead were there. You know, so you, know, you have parents that are, you know, well, he's smart. He, he, he can just watch what he wants. Did you there, right? watch any like of the new Beavis and Butthead? I did. They were oh, yeah. right. And it didn't hold up too long. 
due to the times? It's just because of the nostalgia, I think, and the fact that... On top of the nostalgia, though, did you all see uh, Invader Zim's coming back? Oh, yeah. Well, that'd I be cool. Know that. Yeah, they're bringing it back. Like, I don't know if they're going to do the whole same art style, but that's why it actually went away in the first place, was the art style is way too much to keep up with. It costs way more money to make it then. Well, it's the same dude earning. that did the Angry Beavers, and I think that's probably why Flapjack did, too, because it's all... All three of those are very similar. I think they might even, like, have some of the same people. The art is hard, you know, black line, outline, but then that, you know, and they all kind of have a dark turn. The Angry mm -hmm. Beavers, you have Zim and Flapjack is, like, the trifecta. It's, like, the perfect triangle of... And then you have, like, a red and stimpy core of the things that are technically, like, innocent cartoons, but also... Have really challenging and, and they have dark adult messages. Themes. It's just yeah, it's they're, hidden. Yeah, it's hidden to the children, but the adults will notice it. Right. Well, I like, mean, I the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, kids. for example. Yeah, that show is yeah. fucked. Yeah, but it was good. Even Adventure Time, I guess, has got some po post-apocalyptic yeah. kid yeah. with his imaginary dog. Yeah, it's, I mean, they all play out to be a lot of schizophrenics. The main Where are we going character. with Ed and Eddie in Purgatory? Where are we going <laughs> with this? Hey, dude, that's a, hey, dude. That's, a, that's a really dark fucking <laughs> thing to think <laughs> about. You saw that too, right? Yeah, out of the corner of my eye. And there's also uh, Rugrats and... Well, Rugrats wasn't very dark. Well, there's a way to imply it that... Well, uh, I, like I, the... But, uh, I mean, look. It was Dib, a doll. I forget well, how. Dib and his obsession oh, with Angelica. Aliens. No, it was Angelica. Oh, the well, story that's true. of Angelica. That is that true. That Angelica is, is, like, all the babies are the actually house. there. Yeah, yeah she's, she's in that she's house. She's schizophrenic. Yeah. I thought, it was, I was thinking PTSD, but I'm like, that isn't right. Yeah, yeah. They, they, you can, you can, uh, if you, if you try hard enough, you can turn that uh, uh, innocent cartoon into a fucking Fair enough. dark Well, they say, thing. well, they say because it has dark origins, mm -hmm. so like. Well, it's like Spongebob's based on the seven, or the seven Deadly Sons. Every character has a base. Uh, Winnie the Pooh is based upon uh, mental disorders. <laughs> I, get, I get bored, so I look this up every now and then. <laughs> mental disorders? Well, I don't know if I'd call it. I think almost all of them, it's lonely child alone. They're targeting yeah. the fucking only kids. I mean, really. I mean, and so... Like Angelica, you know, she's an only child, and her mom's real powerful, not around, and her dad's a pussy, you know, so she doesn't have a strong male role model. All the time, I always compare her mom's a ball breaker. Rogue to Shin Chan for some reason in my mind, like, you know, like where it could go. That's a, hmm. I don't know how you can go, how, how you mix, or you're mixing those two up. Well, I can imagine like where it could go story wise. It just could go to Shin Chan. Jesus Christ, no! That's Shin Chan's just something else. Dude, dude you know that show did not pick up well in Japan. I gee, I wonder why. It's because it's humor made for the West. Like, <laughs> like that, that show had the idea of the Western people like in mind, and that's why it didn't pick off very well. But God, that show was freaking great. I think I have like the first season on DVD. It's, it's all on uh, Hulu. It's on Hulu. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, it's definitely yeah, worth watching. I'm going gonna to watch it all. You know what we're talking about, though, or no? Uh, I'm yeah, what is it called? Uh, uh, Crayon Shin Chan. No, that was the second season called. They changed the name for it. Is it Crayon Shin Chan? Is that what it's called? Well, that's what the manga's called, but they call it just Shin Chan whenever they made the real show. The Shin Chan show or some shit? I think it's just probably like one of the little spin off skits. Mm. But it's, just, it's basically just a bunch of kinder, kindergartners with just foul mouths. Like, one oh. of the girls, like, like, they make a bunch of, like. So, South Park. No, well, yeah, kind of, but also, uh, like, they make Japanese, a bunch of, like, <laughs> yeah. Japanese South Park. Japanese or South Park. Pretty much. So, but, like, the episode where Chim Pokemon. Oh, my God. Like, there's this one episode where the girl's, like, <laughs> she's talking about, like, her happiness bunny, and, like, her mom, like, gets beat by like, her dad. Happy Tree Friends Happiness Bunny? No, that's a whole different story. That's just oh. murder for murder. I remember yes. back when that was on Mondo. Yeah. Okay, let's, um... Go ahead and wrap it up. Adobe is acting. Make like a magnum and wrap it up. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And, uh, or a water balloon, in my case. <laughs> Just make a couple rubber bands. <laughs> Anyone have braces? I need a chair. Uh, I guess I'll do plugs, I guess. I haven't done them in a while. Scratch that itchy itch at lewdcomplex.com.
Use offer code KOH podcast, KOH P-O-D-C-A-S-T at checkout to save yourself a little bit of cash. Follow us on Twitter at KOH Podcast. You can follow me at Twitter as at Vito the Gray if you want to. Uh, you can follow Ling Ling at Monica Messenger. Monica's Messenger. Monica's Messenger. And then you have a Twitter? I'm on Twitter at uh, Possum Professor, but I'm rarely on. You might not find me. Possum Professor. I, I'm, a, I'm a, I'm what do you call it, one of them uh, uh, nocturnal uh, You're one of those shadow people. Creatures. I'm not quite a shadow person. That's absolutely a whole nother (laughs) can of worms okay that's it for this episode of Knights of Hyperion Uh, I guess Hyperion Hyperion